dark web, what is it and why do people use it? The internet has changed in many ways since it first became publicly accessible in the 1990s, and one of the most controversial developments is the growth of the so-called dark web. Adults may be concerned about young people visiting the dark web, especially as press reports often link them with dangerous or illegal online activity. However, there are some positive aspects to them, like everything online. Problems do not come from the technology itself, but instead are caused by the ways in which people use it. Being aware of the basic facts about these parts of the internet can help you give realistic and honest support to young people if you are concerned they are using them. Here's a short explainer on the dark web, how it can be accessed, and what are the risks. The open web, deep web, and dark web. The open web. This is the publicly visible part of the internet that most of us use each day and is accessed through search engines such as Google or Bing. The Deep Web This is the part of the internet which is generally hidden from public view. It can't be accessed via the usual search engines and is reached in other, less widely known ways. The majority of the Deep Web is made up of databases which can be accessed securely over the open web. For example, Databases associated with hotel bookings, online purchases, medical records, banking, and others. The content can only be read by authorized people, such as employees, and is protected using passwords. The Dark Web When most people go online, they do so via a computer or device that has an IP, internet protocol, address a unique online identity. An IP address enables networks to send the right information to the right place, for example, making sure an email reaches its destination. An individual's internet activity can be tracked and monitored using their IP address. The dark web uses complex systems that anonymize a user's true IP address, making it very difficult to work out which websites a device has visited. It is generally accessed using dedicated software. The best known is called Tor, the Onion Router. Around 2.5 million people use Tor every day. Tor itself is not the dark web, but instead is a way in which to browse both the open and dark web without anyone being able to identify the user or track their activity. How does Tor work? Tor provides anonymizing software which can be accessed via a search engine and then downloaded free of charge. Tor wraps the sender's message in layers of encryption, rather like the layers of an onion, which is how the system got its name. Searches or messages sent via the Tor browser do not go directly to their intended destination. Instead, they are relayed through nodes, which are other computers operated by Tor users. At each node, a layer of encryption is taken off and the message is then sent onto the next. Each node knows the identity of the previous node and the one that comes next, but does not know the others in the chain. Therefore, it's extremely difficult to track a message's entire journey or to work out where it started and who sent it. Why do people use the dark web? There are three main reasons why people may use the dark web. 1. Anonymization People may have many reasons for protecting their online identity. In some cases, this is because they would be in danger if their identity became known, for example in countries where the government forbids a free press or where there is political censorship. Others may use it to reduce their risk of falling victim to crime, such as people who have been cyberstalked or who are concerned about the security of online banking. Tor is mainly used for people to browse the open web anonymously, a very small percentage of its traffic relates to hidden services, below. 2. Accessing Hidden Services A hidden service, also known as an onion service, is one where not only the user, but also the website itself, have their anonymity protected by Tor. This means that the IP address of the site cannot be identified, meaning that information about its host, location, or content is hidden. Hidden services are sometimes called onion addresses because the website name often ends onion. Tor itself is not a hidden service, but the sites it hosts are. Hidden services can be used legitimately, 
for example for whistleblowing or to allow members of the public to share sensitive information such as knowledge about crimes without the risk of reprisals. However, it is generally believed that the majority of hidden services contain illicit material. They often require registration, username, password, etc., and some have VIP sections accessible only by an invite from the administrators or through an application made by the member and approved by the administrators. 3. Illegal Activity The dark web may be used by people wishing to carry out illegal activities online, such as selling weapons or drugs. These kinds of operations, and the websites offering them, are often referred to as hidden services above. Is it legal? Using Tor or visiting the dark web are not unlawful in themselves. It is of course illegal to carry out illegal acts anonymously, such as accessing child abuse images, promoting terrorism, or selling illegal items such as weapons. What are the risks? In many ways, the risks of the dark web are the same as those that may be encountered in the open web. Young people in both environments may access pornography, indecent images of children, or sites selling drugs and weapons. Young people are also at risk of exploitation and abuse by sex offenders who use all parts of the internet to target victims. However, there is evidence to show that offenders are more likely to interact with victims on the open web than on the dark web. The dark web is more commonly used by sex offenders to openly discuss tactics to exploit young people and share material generated as a result of their offending. It is also harder for law enforcement to investigate online abuse that takes place in the anonymous parts of the internet. 